Welcome to my presentation called Can You Roll Your Own Virtual Assistant? And this is where we're going to just sort of walk through how you can build uh, a Cordova app that consumes the new Lex APIs from Amazon that gives you uh, the ability to add voice recognition and voice response to your apps. Um, so the question is, how did this all start? So I started last year as a technical evangelist with Login with Amazon, where Amazon's consumer login as a service. And I was looking at what you could do with Login with Amazon. And besides sort of like as a social login, you know, Login with Amazon button, I found that we were vending the tokens for a number of Amazon APIs, including the Alexa voice service. And, you know, uh, I decided that I was going to have some fun with it and create an Alexa voice service client in Node that worked in the browser because I'm a web guy from way back, and I mean way back. As you can see, uh, this Snopes page about a joke I wrote, the joke started in 1997 and became an urban legend. So, um, you know, my first website was in 100K of space on Earthlink in 95. Um, so I built this AVS client. It was pretty cool, but it wasn't what AVS was looking for. They actually had their own. If you want to try it, it's at echosim.io. It's really neat. It simulates Alexa in the browser. But I got the voice bug, and I started thinking about ways that I could incorporate voice into other things. And I wondered, could you roll your own personal assistant? And so that I had an excuse to do that, I submitted it to OSCON, and they said yes. Uh, originally, I was going to work with uh, web speech, but web speech had not really progressed as much as I hoped. Uh, you know, it's implemented in Chrome, but Firefox and Edge still have not implemented recognition. Uh, and then along came Lex and Polly, and I asked the uh, AWS people if they minded if I used Lex and Polly in my OSCON presentation. They're like, yeah, go ahead. So here's the presentation format. I'm very generic presentation, as you can tell. Uh, I'm going to show you the app, I'm going to show you how it's made, and then I'm going to show you the app again doing something else. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to demo the Diva. And let's see here. We just got to pull this up. So we're going to demo the Windows version first. Bring her over here. Now, uh, we want to control access to it. We use login with Amazon to let people log in with their consumer login. There's a difference between the AWS login and the Amazon consumer login. So what we can do is we can let people use their consumer login, login with Amazon. And so that I'm not entering passwords on stage, I already logged in and told it to remember me, so I'm just going to prove the login. Uh, normally, this would just let you log in with your Amazon email, you know, the email address and password you use for Amazon. If you have two-factor authentication, it will respect that. Um, We'll log in there, give it permission. We come back to the app. We've traded the token that Login with Amazon gave us to Cognito for AWS credentials. And we're now set up to talk to AWS. So we're just going to run the basic. Now, this is a sample uh, intent in Lex that we built into this bot. And uh, we'll just run through it as their flower ordering intent. And you see I've got my little debug window in there because this is still a programmer's app, not a consumer app. And we just. Press and hold. I'd like to order some flowers. I'd like to order some flowers. What type of flowers would you like to order? Daisies. What day do you want the daisies to be picked up? Tomorrow. Pick up the daisies at what time on May 12th, 2017? Four. OK. Your daisies will be ready for pickup by 4 on May 12th, 2017. Does this sound OK? Yes. And that concludes the ordering operation. At this point, it would either feed the data that I gave it to a Lambda, uh, Lambda skill, or it would then pass all that data back to my app for the app to actually act on the data. Uh, and we'll go through that when we set up the Cognito, the Lex skill. So we'll tab out of this and go to the next step. So with setting up the Diva, we basically have four parts. We need to set up login with Amazon. We need to set up Cognito. We need to set up AWS Lex. 
And poly is built into that. You can also do poly separately, but you get it in Lex. And then we need to set up the Cordova app. So we're going to run through a lot of slides. I screen cap this so there's no waiting for things to process. And um, so first thing we do is we set up login with Amazon. This is just basic OAuth2 profile API delegated login, like login with Google, login with Facebook. Um, it also vends tokens for other Amazon APIs, but for this, we're just using the standard profile API, which will give you the user's email address and their zip code. Uh, you can get their zip code. It'll give the, you their email address. So we're going to go to developer.amazon.com. We're going to log in. If we have to create a developer account, you can. You can use your same Amazon login credentials to create the developer account. You're going to go to the Apps and Services tab. You're going to select Login with Amazon, and you are going to create a security profile. This is pretty straightforward. What's the, the name and the security profile description will come up when the user is asked to approve your app getting access to their profile. And then you can also add your logo there. That logo is actually something I got off of Pixabay. It's pretty cool. Um, public domain. You can all use it if you want. Then after you've created your profile, you're going to go to manage your security profile. And there's, a, you see that drop-down menu. If, you, if I hadn't invoked the drop-down menu before I screen capped, there would be a little gear there. Click the gear. You're going to go to your security profile because you need to get some information that you will use in your app. You're going to want to get your security profile ID and your client ID. And notice I'm hiding them because I don't want to share everything, especially the secret. Uh, we're going to do an implicit grant, which is the less secure grant, but only lasts for an hour. And all you need for that is the security profile ID and the client ID. You'll copy those down. And you'll set your origin, because for an implicit grant, it wants to see that it's coming from a specific URL that you have authorized your users to come from. Helps keep people from hijacking them. So that's it. We've set up login with Amazon. Now we're going to set up Cognito. And we're going to go into the AWS console and from there go into Cognito. Manage your federated identities and create an identity pool. Name it Diva. We won't do on unauthenticated. And we're going to set up Amazon as an authentic authentication provider. And so that security profile ID that you just copied, you will then paste in there in the Amazon app ID so that it can take that security profile ID and validate. Somebody is calling me. Oh, no. That's... that's a, no, that's an alarm, I think. Holy... Where's, it? Where's my clock? I don't know what it is. We're going to disconnect it. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's my, that's my alarm to catch the bus. Oh, I thought it was on my phone. It was actually on my laptop. Thank you. Hey, there we go. Yeah, that's my alarm to catch the bus so I can get home in time to get my kids from daycare. <laughs> OK. So, and there's our app. So we've put in the app, the security profile ID there in the app ID. And that's so we can verify that the security, that the token that you send to Cognito is actually coming from your app. And then we're going to, uh, it's going to ask us to create a new IAM role, and we'll just go with the defaults. Then it'll take us to our pool, and you want to go to the edit screen for your pool. It's up there in the uh, top right corner. Your top right, yes. Um, edit identity pool, and there you'll have your identity pool ID, which you'll need for your app. Now we're going to go back to the AWS console, go over to IAM, and we're going to set up the role. And so we will edit the Cognito Diva auth role, and we're going to attach a couple policies to it. You can filter the policies 
by what you're looking for so you can get Lex. And then once you've checked it, it stays checked even if you remove the filtering and get a whole big list. So we'll add Lex and Lambda. This app that I'm going to show you is not going to use Lambda, but there's so much integration of Lambda that if you're interested in that, you really sort of want to make that one of your defaults for your apps. Now it is time to set up our Lex bot. And we're going to go back to the, Cog the AWS console, go over to Amazon Lex, we'll get started. We're going to create that order flowers routine. That's a basic template that they have. You can get it automatically built into your bot just so you can explore it. You don't have to keep it. But we'll do that. We'll give it a name. As we scroll down that page, it's going to sort of show us how that order flowers bot is structured. And we'll go through that as we go through um, the actual setting up of your bot. And then the IAM role, default, let it go. Uh, Child directed. Mine is actually child directed because the other uh, sk the other intent we're going to create is a knock knock joke. Make the uh, make Lex a straight man for your knock knock jokes, and uh, nobody enjoys that more than my eight year old, because Lex never says I've already heard this. Stop. So one of the reasons I did screen captures is now it would take about a couple minutes to set up your Lex bot, but once it's set up, we see that we have. Um, your sample utterances, which invoke Lex, you know, I'd like to order some flowers. Uh, and then also, once you've built it the first time, you can start testing it in that test window, which does minimize. And you can do it both in text, or if you click that microphone icon, you can actually talk to your, t talk to your bot to test it. Once we've created our invocation with the utterances, now it's going to follow with the various parts of the conversation. So the next thing it asked us was, what type of flowers do you want? And we have both a, a slot name and a slot type. And the slot name will actually, your response to it will be recorded. And you can use that slot name like a variable to reference what was said. So you see down in the second one with the uh, prompt, you'll see that the slot name is, uh, what? No, on the third one. I can't, I'm seeing this from an angle. So there we go. OK, yeah. You see very, at the end of that, you have the curly braces. You can put the slot name and curly braces to include whatever was said in the previous slot name or slot names in the final, uh, in, in what Lex says back to you. And actually, we see those in the confirm statement. So we'll actually look at a slot type, and that's the flowers. Um, now notice that daisies is not included. Lex is an AI, so we're giving Lex cues, but we're not making, you know, we're not necessarily constricting Lex to just these three. So when I said daisies, Lex understood that I, you know, Lex was fine with it. And then if we go over into the settings tab. This is where we set the voice that Lex will use. There are about a dozen voices, uh, two male, one juvenile male, one adult male, and a number of uh, female voices. And then also, if you, when you set the language when you're setting up your bot, they actually have voices for different languages. So the thing that impressed me most when I was playing with Polly is that they not only have an English speaker with a Welsh accent, but they also have a Welsh speaker. And they have different voices for both. So then we go down to aliases, and this is a really good part of Lex. When you build your bot um, and you actually publish it, you can then take the published version and make that like your production version and continue to iterate on your bot in your dev channel and have both channels because you will specify a bot alias when you actually call Lex through the API. So you can actually have like your dev software calling the dev bot and you, you know, the dev alias, and you can have your production software, the app you're distributing, calling the production bot. Now we're going to create the new intent, and this is the knock-knock joke. So we, as you see, there are built-in intents for very common things like canceling, stop, or uh, asking for help. But you can also, you know, you create a custom intent, and we're going to create a knock-knock joke. We start with the name. 
And our sample utterance would be knock knock or knock knock lex or knock knock diva. We then start creating our slots. And so I have who is there and there is who. I use that because first they're going to ask who's there, and then they're going to say whatever your answer is, who. So uh, who's there is going, to get, is going to ask who's there and get that response. And we've got a few there. We've got itch, arch, orange, and banana. Uh, banana and orange being my eight-year-old's favorite knock-knock joke. Uh, and then we will assign them to the slots in Lex. And we will you know, hit that little plus symbol to add slots. And as you see, you know, we have who is there. And then after it gets that from you, it's using who is there in the curly braces to repeat that back to you to say who. So if you say orange, it says orange who. And then we have our confirmation prompt. Um, it's actually going to sort of throw away the data from there is who, but you can access it. It's not used. It'll just laugh at whatever you said and um, ask you if you're a professional comedian. And if you say no, it'll tell you you should be. So that's all. So we've set up everything in AWS and in logging with Amazon. So we are now done with the Amazon site, the AWS consoles. We're now going to set up a few things to actually make our app. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the AWS SDK. And this is a great thing. Uh, for the JavaScript SDK, you can actually build just the pieces of AWS you need into it. So you don't have a huge multi-megabyte JavaScript file that's going to use up compute cycles and memory. You can just have the bits you want. This is about 280K with those three bits. Then also, you can go to my uh, GitHub. I've basically taken Matt Diamond's Recorder JS uh, for a number of the voice things that I've been working on. and. 16-bit, 16K mono PCM seems to be very popular among voice recognition technologies. So this is I've just basically cobbled together a fork of a fork and some Stack Overflow stuff to make something that outputs that format of audio. And you can take those two JavaScript files. You just include them in your Cordova app. Uh, and then you're just going to make a bouncer. So as you saw, my origin was a. Uh, GitHub pages page, because you need an HTTPS page to be your origin. And uh, you can't really sort of have an HTTPS page within your Cordova app. So we just open an in-app browser, which then opens the HTTPS page, which simply executes this bit of JavaScript to bounce you over to Amazon's login. So we make the Cordova client. And please don't hate that I'm using uh, Visual Studio. Uh, it's actually really good for Cordova because it hooks into all the debug stuff and gives you a lot of good feedback. And it's got IntelliSense, which is actually pretty good. And I used to work on the DevTools uh, documentation for IE, so I'm very familiar with uh, those tools. I'm trying to remember. Oh, yes. So as you'll notice, when you come in, it checks to see if you're logged in. And if you're not, it bounces you over to the do login page, which has the login with Amazon button. Now, why is there a do login page? Because I'm a web developer from way back. This should have been an SPA, but I have bad web design habits that are old enough to drink. So um, what we're going to do now is we're just going to walk through, you know, I, you know, I don't want this to be a your first Cordova app and you tutorial. There are way too many of those. You can find lots of them. What I'm going to walk through are the specific bits of code you need to incorporate this functionality. So the first thing we're going to do is get the login with Amazon access token. When the button's clicked, you open an in-app browser, which is a plugin for Cordova, which gives you a sandbox browser. Um, and you just listen for what URLs it opens. When it comes back to your the referral URL that you gave it. You close the browser, and you can extract the information you need from the referral URL. And this is just uh, you know, a little bit of code to help you break that up. And we'll put that stuff in local storage. Use the HTML5 local storage API. 
And it's pretty simple, you know, set logged into true, save the time that you logged in, save the token, and save how long the time to live so that you can check if somebody's logged in again like an hour and a half later and the token's expired, you know and you know to log them in again. If you were to do a, rather than a, an implicit grant, you were to do an authorization grant uh, workflow with login with Amazon, you could get it to have a refresh token so you could refresh that token over and over again and one login would be good. Uh, but we're doing this in a very basic way today. So now to trade the LWA token to Cognito, we start using the AWS uh, SDK. And that, you know, including that in your HTML file, uh, basically gives you the AWS object. And we now create a Cognito identity credentials object with the identity pool ID you uh, copied from your edit page on the identity pool. And then you're going to pass it as the parameters, the uh, www.amazon.com and the token that you got from using login with Amazon. Uh, then all you got to do is you do the credentials get, and that will add the credentials to the AWS SDK. And what you do there is, um, as your callback, when you get back the credentials from Cognito, you create your AWS Lex runtime object. And there are two different APIs for Lex. There's the Lex runtime, which is basically where you just send sound to it and get sound back and some data. Um, but there's also an API for Lex where you can actually build your bots interactively and programmatically. This is just using the, uh, send the small recorder JS. When you end your recording, you can just create uh, a blob. You put it into parameters for a call to Lex post content, and you send that, and, that's, and you're done. You've actually just captured the user audio and sent it to Lex. When Lex sends it back, sends back, um, Data you can actually, you know, sends back an object. What you can do there is the way I've handled it, it is I put an HTML audio element in the app. We've uh, basically converted the binary audio that Lex sent back to a base64 string and turned it into a data URI and set that data URI as the source for the HTML audio element. And now we just play the HTML audio element. So now we're going to wrap this up. Ha ha. Oh, cool. I'm actually ahead of schedule. Whenever I time these out in my hotel room, I'm like always over. And then I come here and I'm almost 10 minutes fast. But I'm actually going to only be like five minutes fast today. So we're going to wrap it up with the knock knock joke. And we will use the, uh, we'll use our um, mobile version. Now, the one thing is that this does not actually capture this program visor, which is really good for live streaming your phone to your desktop, does not capture the audio. So I'll probably have to hold the phone up to my, uh, to my mic here. And we'll do the same login. And continue. And there we go. So now we'll do that. Let's see how this works. Knock, knock. Oh, I turned off my audio. Knock, knock. <laughs> oh, this is fun. <laughs> knock, knock, Lex. OK, just a moment. We're going to back out here and actually put some well, actually, it's just make sure that we're playing something. OK, for the first time, it is. Ah, oh, there we go. All righty. So now we can go back to lax. Ah. So knock, knock. Who's there? You all heard that? 
Arch. Arch who? Bless you. Ha ha ha, that is very funny. Are you a professional comedian? Yes. And then it's over. Because it, the way it says you should be sounds very sarcastic. <laughs> so, um, but the one thing I wanted to do here, and I'm going to pull this out. Um, so one thing I discovered as I was building this app was with Recorder.js, you have to, when you start a recording, you have to clear your audio buffer. Otherwise, it tacks on, it just depends whatever you record. And so Lex, you know, one of the great things about it is when it hears the invocation, it will start the intent over again. That's why my eight-year-old can do knock, knock, who's there, banana, knock, knock, who's there, banana, knock, knock, who's there, orange. Um, and Lex will work with that. But when you're not clearing your audio buffer, Lex keeps hearing knock, knock. And so I created this puppet show to show the trolling effectiveness of a broken knock-knock intent. So bear with me. This is my first public performance of this. Knock-knock. <laughs> Who's there? Banana. Who's there? I just told you. Banana. Who's there? Banana. Who's there? Ba na na. Who's there? <laughs> and scene. So, so before we go, uh, oh, there was my slide for that. Um, before we go, the AWS folks asked me to let you know that they are doing a chatbot challenge. This is an online hackathon through DevPost. Uh, submissions are due July 18th. There's all sorts of prizes, including reInvent tickets. Um, and so pay attention to that. I did upload my slides for OSCON, so hopefully they will be available after this. And if you want to follow me on the internet, uh, I tweet at Yiddish Ninja. My blog is Yiddish.ninja. Uh, there it seems to be like, I guess, maybe two minutes. So if you want, I can pretend I'm Sean Spicer. <laughs> and be surly. But actually, you know, we're going to break. So I'm going to let everybody who wants to go, go. Anybody who wants to ask questions, come talk to me. I'll hang out in the hall. We'll have fun. Thank you.